Hi, my name is Nicole Gonzalez Filos. I am the editor in chief of The Runner, and this is what we can expect from our latest issue. Hi guys, so one of the articles I worked on for this issue is a feature on open education at the university and open education resource is described as learning materials in text media formats that are made free and available for consumption. So for this article, I interviewed Dr. Rajiv Janjiani, who is the Associate Vice President of Teaching and Learning. I also interviewed Arlie Cruders and Melissa Ashman, who are both faculty members in KPU School of Business. All three members have played a part in implementing and advocating for open education at the university. So Dr. Zhang Jiani says the work to grow open education at the university began in the 2015-2016 year and since then more faculty members have began adopting open textbooks into their classes and some are even creating their own. He says over a few dozen textbooks have been published so far. And Ashman has said that since using open textbooks, it saved her students money and more of her students are completing their assigned readings. If you want to read more, head over to our website. The runner has learned that recently elected Kwatlin Student Association Arts Representative Alvin Chant is facing criminal charges in Surrey and Pitt Meadows related to incidents that allegedly took place in October and December. As an elected faculty representative, Chand is responsible for representing Kwatlin Polytechnic University art students at KSA General Council meetings and for advocating and lobbying for the interests of those students. Chand was charged with driving while prohibited in Surrey on October 5th and was charged with mischief, dangerous operation of a conveyance, and failure to stop after an incident in Pitt Meadows on December 13th. These charges have yet to be proven in a court of law. Chan told the runner that he had been arrested on December 12th after he was allegedly assaulted in a racially motivated attack. A spokesperson for the RCMP said that they could not confirm the date and time of Chan's arrest. The runner will continue to provide more updates as more information becomes available. This culture article was written by Abby Luciano. On January 12th, the first segment of Kwantlen Polytechnic University's Art Speaker Series of 2022 will showcase a more positive light on climate change and science. KPU criminology instructor Mark Barty will discuss how climate change is often talked about in the public and policies made around climate science. He will also present his research from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change since 2005, interviewing scientists on how they are tackling climate change. With the extreme weather events that happened in the province last year, Barty says it's important to have the event now to show not only the visible effects of climate change, but also the more subtle ones. While there's a lot of information out there about climate change already, Barty hopes people will see other perspectives, broaden the conversation around climate change, and take different actions. The free event will take place from 1 to 2 p.m. through Microsoft Teams on January 12th. Those who wish to attend can email artsevents at kpu.ca to register for the virtual event. This opinion article was written by Maggie Tour. In the courtrooms of Ontario, a pan-Canadian group of 13 young people aged 12 to 18, aided by the nonprofit legal aid organization Justice for Children and Youth, are suing the federal government. Their case stands on the argument that the current minimum voting age of 18 years violates two sections of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The plaintiff's filed claim says that denying the franchise to younger citizens perpetuates stereotypical and prejudicial attitudes that young people are less capable and less deserving of participating in Canadian democracy through the voting process. Manji argues that this case should be welcomed as a mixed social, political, and legal experiment and that while lowering the minimum voting age is a step in the right direction towards reigniting passion and interest in politics, we should remember that this is not an absolute solution. On December 10th, pop, hip-hop, and R&B artist Moby released their debut mixtape called The Forest. The mixtape reflects on a novel from a four-part series that Moby wrote, showing the importance of spreading love to others and himself. 
Henry, a flower delivery guy, a clown named Moby Locks, and a custodian are just a few of the characters in his album. Outside of the music world, Moby is also known as Ronsfor Lai. He was born in Accra, Ghana, and grew up in between the UK and Vancouver, British Columbia. Before entering music nine years ago, Moby was a professional basketball player for several years in Denmark and England. Now, he has released two EPs, The Forest, and has gone on multiple tours around the world. In the article, Moby shares his writing process and which songs off the recent album are his favorite, and how significant they are to him.